Well, today I'm joined by Dr. Erin Elliott of Post Falls, Idaho. Erin, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm very good. I'm impressed you got it right. Well, you know, I normally say outside of Boise, which is eight <laughs> hours away. But, you know, that joke is now three years old, so we have to come up with a Still new works. one. We have to come up with a new one. So, Erin, you are considered, and I know sometimes you have a hard time accepting this, but you are considered a leader and an expert in the field of sleep apnea. Why? Tell us why. Why are you so passionate about sleep apnea? Well, I think there's a couple reasons. The, the first reason why I'm so passionate about sleep apnea is that I love to sleep myself. Okay. I may not have sleep apnea, but as soon as I found out that Dennis could be part of a patient's journey for a better night's sleep, I was like, I am, I am all in. Um, and also because of my father. He was a snorer. His entire life, my entire life. And that's just what my dad did is he snored and we accepted it as normal. And what I didn't realize until I knew better is that that's not normal and you don't have to live that way. And so he was my first patient. He, he's a dentist and a huge mentor in my life. And he came to the course. And as soon as we made him an appliance, I, the, with the energy he had, but the way that it helped my mom with her insomnia I was sold. And this was almost 10 years ago. Yeah. And I, I came up ac ac across a lot of obstacles. I really did. My partner, I was an associate then. He's just like, forget about it. This is just a fad. Um, this is too difficult. Uh, you're not doing enough. And I probably had every possible thing thrown at me. But as I say, when we teach is yeah. I found my why and I wasn't going to yeah. let it go. So we understand why you're passionate about it. It's very clear to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And what I, what, I, what I want to point out to that story is your dad was a healthcare professional. He was a dentist. And yeah. dentists should and do play a vital role in sleep apnea. And to me, that's even more reason why we need to spread the message about sleep apnea is because so many of our colleagues don't recognize, number one, the health benefits and consequences and the role we can play in really changing people's lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how has implementing sleep apnea impacted your practice? A common story that I heard, um, that I hear, is how many dentists there are and that it's so saturated. I think first and foremost, it has really set us apart amongst other dentists. Mm -hmm. Not just as for the dentistry, but that we care about our profession, that we're continuing, uh, continuing to learn, and that we can help patients beyond just teeth. I think that's probably the biggest impact is that it set us apart. And as soon as they come in our doors, they're like, wow, this culture is really pretty fun, and that professional. Culture, so that culture kind of infects, in a good way, the rest of your team. Oh, yeah. Because they see the patients who really love what you do and, and really are impacted yeah, and at do. the core of it, they see that that's, that's why we show up to work every day is truly for the patient. Yeah. And we are Post Falls Family Dental, and our tagline is join our family because I, I realize, especially as we bring uh, brought on an associate, I'm like, I feel like my patients are my friends and my family. Yeah. Yeah. And has sleep been a big a part of being able to bring on an associate? It truly has, yes. Um, I over the years have worked towards this, but we are now at a point where my partner and I work three days a week and I'm doing dentistry and sleep and, and bringing on an associate. Uh, she's just amazing. And, and we've been able to balance out what the procedures we do. I can do more of the procedures I like and yeah. want to do. And we've been able to help so many more patients with things they didn't know was possible that they didn't know dentists could do that, um, that we could do in our practice. And I'm excited to continue to serve our mm. population. Yeah. That's awesome. So like to some, to people like me and you, it's like, I mean, come on, we just got to do it. Right. But what are the three obstacles that are holding dentists back from really 
getting getting into because listen i think the statistics are is less than five percent of dentists are actively providing oral appliance therapy for sleep apnea patients and we have so many patients undiagnosed um there is i i have taken plenty of polls and surveys um because i've even set up a lecture with giving the excuse ahead of time right. and showing that none of them work uh i think there's a lot of fear and confusion okay uh, that medical billing is scary or not possible, that working phys with physicians, it's medicine, we shouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. So I've heard every excuse Which appliance to sun. use? Should I be doing HST? Should I not be doing HSTs? What is the right way of doing sleep apnea? You know, it's like we get in our own way as a profession and create this massive confusion and we forget sometimes about who we're after. And that is... To take care of the patient. Mm -hmm. There's you and know. there is a lot of noise. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of noise. Yeah. So okay. So three obstacles. Number one is confusion. It's just with fear. Yeah. Well, you ask ten people and you're going to get twelve different ways of doing yeah. it. So there's a lot of confusion mm -hmm. there. What is number two? Number two, I think, and and it's something that I struggled with at first too, uh, is getting the team on board. And okay. and I would have to say admit that they're there probably is some kind of hesitation from some of my team members. Okay. But what they know is that this is going to happen. This is a big part. And they see the benefits it brings our patients and even their own family and spouses. Even if they're, um, they don't, they're not an expert on the subject, my entire team at least knows how to talk to patients yeah. about it. And I think that there is a hesitation or or dentists don't know how to get their whole team on board. Yeah. You know, I take that a little step further, and I, I would say that sleep apnea has probably given your some of your team members a path to uh, greater. Yeah. You know, well, you got you know, to witness it. They yeah. can, they can, um, you know, like looking at meeting Bree. Mm -hmm. You know, number one, she's in charge, so she has a, a an ownership mentality. Mm -hmm. She controls her destiny for how much money she'll make. She probably works technically, physically less hard yeah. than the traditional assistant. Well, and as a new mama, she yeah. gets to kind of control her schedule, schedule too. Yeah, I kind of know, let her. You know, so I think those are some of the things that we see. And, and I would take it a step further than that even and, and say, as we're talking about team, I think one of the obstacles is dentists have been led to believe or the way the courses are set up is that sleep apnea is something the dentist learns and no one else learns. And I think part of the challenge in team when it comes to sleep apnea is not taking your team along for the ride. I was just going to say that we, we as educators cannot stress it enough to bring your team. And if a dentist signs up by himself or herself, the first thing Lori does is call and say, Same. you should reconsider. And every single time they come by themselves... What do they say? I, sh I wish I, I brought my team. It's, it's not from us <laughs> not, like not trying. Every time. And so, so we're talking about the three obstacles. Number yeah. one is confusion. Uh, number two is team members. And what, what's number three? Number three, I think, is taking, getting all of this knowledge. And it's fascinating. And we learned so much. We had a sleep. It's so deep. We had a sleep physician come and talk. And everyone was all excited. But it's kind of like, now what? Okay, I learned this great information. And what do I do with it? Yeah. And I've seen, I've even literally seen it at a course where people looking around like, okay. So I feel like the practical implementable workflow because it's different than dentistry. Yeah. It's not like we're adding um, a new type of crown. Um, assistants know how to do that. This is a little different workflow, but no one really focuses on you have the patient in the hygiene chair. Mm -hmm. Now what do you do with yeah. them? How do you get all the proper documentation for medical billing and get them to the appliance? We know how to do the appliance. That's yeah. the easy part. You know what I or found, easier part. Right. You know what I found when I was starting my journey several years ago was, all right, I got I've got the education. You know, I, I understand how to take a bite and make an appliance. You know, I'll worry about dealing with the any side effects that may exist. But it was really about okay you're right how do i make this happen what do i do step by step by step and what the challenge i was having was so many of the people teaching 
their practices were limited to this and it didn't speak mm-hmm. to me. It didn't speak to me as a PPO dentist, yep. as a, you know, going between, you know, I, Hey, I might be in a one hour period. I may be doing a filling. I may be doing a hygiene check. I may be doing this. I may be suddenly be doing an implant and I have my mind has to change and that's no different for our team. And, and it kind of, all of this kind of goes together. It's yep. confusion, it's team, it's a workflow. It's kind of just putting the dots together. It's overwhelming, I think, at at first. But what is that saying? Everyone can eat an elephant one one bite at a time. time. Not that I I want to eat an elephant. No, but I think if you can get the infrastructure in place um, and just start with family and friends and get that workflow, it just just becomes a machine. But the key is you got to get started. Oh, yeah, Yeah. because we think of all the possible reasons why not to. And believe me, I had every single one of thrown it my way and people even telling me to give up and look at me now. Yeah. Look at my practice, I should say. It wasn't it wasn't me. Well, you you led. Yeah. You know, so what is the best way to overcome some of these obstacles? You know, it's such a cliche answer, but education is one. Well, I would say uh, the, the right education. The right education is one. And you can find a lot of that online even. Yeah. Um, you know, when it's funny I, you say that, by the way, because so much of sleep apnea you can learn on YouTube. How do you think I learned some yeah. of it? Like, I'm like, oh, I'm really interested in nasal breathing and nitric oxide. So I'm going to go down this rabbit hole and just gobble the information. Um, it's all noise, by the way, in getting started, all that stuff. Yeah. You don't need, you don't need to know about nitric oxide to get started in sleep. It's all stepping stones, right? So much of the academic programs do is they drown you in so much academia that, that you're just like, holy smokes, I got to do all of this stuff. I'm just going to go back to doing fillings and crowns. Right. Because that's what we went to school for. Yeah, you know. Um, So getting getting the team at least a basic understanding to feel comfortable to bring it up to patients. You know, I hear that all the time, that resistance. Like, what if I don't know the answer? I was like, guess what? You now know more than your patient. And if you don't know the answer, we are there to support you. It's okay. But all I want you to do is recognize these signs and symptoms and know that we can help our patients. And again, as soon as it becomes personal to them, they spread the word. Yeah. It's and just about getting the conversation. You, you really, miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Uh, well, I think it really it's just about, we just want you to start start talking to yeah. the patient. Bring it up. When you get to that point, just say, hey, you know what? That's a little bit beyond what I know about it. I'd love to bring Dr. Elliot in mm-hmm. or Brie in. And they're the expert in this. They yeah. can talk to you in more So again, detail. there's fear. Yeah. Um, but... It, you just need to start the conversation. So education is one of the obstacles. The other is is knowing to who to listen to even. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what you think the third could be. Yeah, no, but, but you know, the, oh, the way to overcome it is is to get started. Just do know, it. Yeah. Just do it. You know, get, get the confusion out, get the right education and get the right education from the right people. And, you know, and... and you know, it's so that is so uh, so important in everything, right? It's 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 about who resonates with you. It's about whose voice speaks to you. Whose voice you like? Okay, that person is like me. I can learn from that person. I feel comfortable asking that person questions. And and that's a, that that may not be you. That may not be me. That may be somebody else. You know, if you're all into science and all into academia, I always tell them I'm not your person. Isn't that kind of how you found me though? Well, I, yeah, but I listen. But you talk. You said the right things. Yeah. You, you said the words that I wanted to hear. You talked about, hey, I'm a PPO practice. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I'm making it happen. You know, I'm fighting a battle. It's not all easy. And you never talked about the fears. You never talked about why you shouldn't do it. And, mm-hmm. and to me, I was like, okay, this is a person I can I can learn from. Mm-hmm. And, and that was important. And look at me now, right? <laughs> you know, to use your words. So, what does success in sleep apnea look like for the dentist who does it? Is it that my whole practice becomes sleep apnea? No, and I, and I think there is um, a big focus on that. I remember someone reaching out to me saying, I can take you from this many appliances to that many appliances. And I was like, part of me, I don't really want to do that many yeah. appliances. Um, my, I still am very passionate and so enamored with dentistry, you know? Yeah. And so I don't want to give up that part of my practice. And that's the beauty of the practice of dentistry is you can kind of tailor it to how you want to. Um, Obviously we need, you can't lose money doing it. That 
just doesn't even make sense. So it has been a nice additional revenue to my practice. Um, I would hardly call it a nice additional revenue. It's pretty big revenue. <laughs> it's been nice, and it's kind of like the cherry on top. Yeah. Um, I've worked so hard at it and, and got it kind of, you know, because of the right team and systems. Um, it kind of I'm, it, it frees me up to be able to still do dentistry. So what, what I'm hearing you say, and what I've experienced in my own life, actually, my own practice, is that sleep is very team-driven. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what is your, you know, your involvement in a case is probably 15% of the time. I mean, you, yeah. I know you see every patient, but the overall process, say, for example, a patient is seen 100 minutes. I mean, I don't know if that's the right number, but you're probably involved 15, 20 minutes. Well, the patient's not, if you're even talking pre offs and all the background yeah. work. Well, that's none of you. It, yeah. So I'd say I tend to spend a little, probably a little bit more time, but probably 20 minutes. Yeah. For, yeah, and yeah. that's awesome, right? Yeah. And it's not 20 minutes of backbreaking work either. Mm-mm. It's actually 20 minutes of talking to people and getting a relationship with them yep. and understanding who and, they are and what's going on in their life. And that's why when my husband <clears throat> teases me, when we go out to dinner, he goes, I can tell when it's a sleep apnea patient and when it's a dental patient. Yeah. He's like, the sleep apnea patients drag you over to the table and introduce you to their entire family and hang on to you tight. So that's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's gratifying in that way, but I wouldn't do it if we couldn't be successful at it. And I wouldn't, you know, I would say I wouldn't do it if my team wasn't behind it, but I think that I wouldn't have the team that I do if they weren't behind it, no, Absolutely. you know, finding the right people. Yeah. And I've had turnover well, and we have I, I a wanna, good crew. I want to correct what, what you said. I, I don't think it's about finding the right people. I think it's about identifying and coaching and building the right people. Mm-hmm. I firmly believe that most practices have the right people in their office. They're just not unleashing them. You know, you know I, I, te- I teased Brie, um, mentioned it, that she had a very, very quick stint at the front desk. Yeah. It didn't work out so well. And I actually did not see her taking on this role the way that she did like a diamond in the rough but she is she's very direct and and makes good decision quick decisions and at the front desk she doesn't put up with people's guffs so that wasn't the right you can get you can get away with that in the back yes but she just builds up such amazing rapport and ownership and organization and leadership i just i can't say enough about her and that's not to say that well i don't have a brie i can't do this I didn't have a Brie. Yeah. You cre- it, 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 we right. developed it. We unleashed her. <laughs> yeah, and basically, right? You yeah. put her in the right spot. Yeah. So, all right. So now we've got people interested. They're like, okay, listen, I got to grow my practice. I'm trying to bring in an associate. I'm trying to diversify what I want to do. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fighting corporate dentistry. I'm mm-hmm. fighting dental insurance. I'm fighting all these things. I'm looking for some solutions. Hey, it sounds like sleep apnea is one of the solutions out there. And there are many. So... In your seminars and in your workshops at 3D Dentist, you teach a four-step workflow uh, to being successful with sleep apnea. Can you t- briefly talk to us about that? Yeah. So, um, like you have said before, I get so I do get people reaching out to me with questions, and oftentimes it's what appliance do you use? And your our point is it doesn't matter which appliance you use if you don't have a patient to put yeah. it in. And so oftentimes we skip to the end, to the solution before even um, creating an awareness in our practice. So the first step is awareness. Okay. And the, the part two to that I like to add is creating urgency because we have so many offices that are cr- doing a great job creating awareness, talking to the patients but then the patients aren't really seeing the value in what they're mm-hmm. providing to lead them to the second step. Yeah, so so, there, so sometimes we'll create awareness. And one of the things that, that you do in the course, uh, that, that we do in the courses at 3D Dentists, is we walk team members and doctors through some of the basic fundamental things that can help identify and create awareness. Uh, we break them down into physical conditions, non-physical conditions, things that we see as a dentist, mm-hmm. and things that we see as... Somebody's health consequences, yeah, health history, 
dental signs and symptoms, and also the basics of sleep medicine, because yeah. you have to have a foundation to be able to speak to Some physicians in medical basics. billing. Yeah, yeah, this sleep 101. All right, so step one is awareness. Step two is? Diagnosis. Diagnosis. So we should not, we, we should know at this time that you should not make a snore guard for someone yeah. without first understand, understanding the potentially dangerous underlying disease. And that um, would include either an overnight sleep study or a home sleep test. But we need to understand what we're dealing with, yeah. you know, so. Um, and that diagnosis cannot be made by a dentist. Correct. Absolutely cannot be made by a dentist, but we can get to uh, get to the patient to that point so we can identify exactly what's going on with them, the severity, and helping you understand what that all means. Yeah. So one of the things that I love or I hear all the time is that we create awareness and we go down this rabbit hole with our patients, whether it's the patients bringing us down there or us going us down there. And I always say, listen, you know, and when we're teaching, I'm trying to put it in perspective. I'm like, listen. We don't even know if you have this condition right now. The next step before we have all these conversations about the what's and the how's and all of this and stuff. And all the side effects. Yeah, and, let's yeah. just find out if you have that. Let's yeah. see if there's even a, something for us to talk about. And that, that goes to your point of step two is the diagnosis. Yeah. And I like the way you say it even because um, what I've noticed lately and I've kind of stepped away from is using the term sleep apnea because yeah. the patients put up a wall like I, that's an old fat man's disease. But um, the way you say it is that we need to rule out yeah. a potentially life-threatening disease called sleep apnea. And we just need to make sure that you don't have it so that we can make you the right kind of night guard. So step one is awareness. Uh, awareness. Step two is diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Step three is financials. All right. And that is getting the patients to value it enough to pay for it. They'll go pay 50, you know, $6,000 for an Invisalign case. But as soon as we bring up something that could help save their life, that they, you know, it's snoring. That, it's got to you know. be medical insurance. Right. So we do um, kind of discuss that flow i would say it's not like a whole day course on sure. it or anything but enough to be familiar with it and to know the the basics because it's not dentistry but i don't it, it's it's a huge huge obstacle for dentists yeah. but it's possible you know here's what i would say on the financials part of it step three of the workflow is is we have a blessing and a curse okay mm -hmm. and that's called medical insurance the blessing is, is that since it's a medically diagnosed condition, nearly every plan out there has some level of coverage for it. And oftentimes, if the patient's met the deductible, there's minimal out-of-pocket for the patient. The curse is also that we let it be a crutch, and we don't sometimes give our patients or help our patients choose to pay out-of-pocket for it. And so, you know, we, we do discuss about being in insurance networks, you know, dealing with medical insurance. And we also talk about how to make it affordable for the patient by leveraging internal payment plans, mm -hmm. third-party financing, different things like that. And most importantly, again, it comes back to that team is we're, we're teaching the team these things. And, and frankly, some of the financial conversations that we have about payment plans apply to so many parts of your practice, not just sleep apnea. So it can kind of be applied and to so many areas. And that's why I think, um, you know, as I, as I teach, I, I kind of share some of the verbiage and communication, but one of the biggest things is finding the patient's pain point. But kind of the, what Bree's so good at and our, what our flow is so good at is converting this patient coming in just because um, I was told to be here to, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is what's going on. Like yeah. I need to A do something about it. They, they have been told by their doctor. They have no clue what sleep apnea is, why it's important, and that they should and do it something about it. They get a phone call that says, yep, you have it. Go get your mask. And yeah. they don't understand the potential so that step they have. one is awareness. awareness step two is diagnosis step three is financials what's the fourth step is clinical okay. the actual <laughs> the dentistry part finally we yes. get to the treatment yeah and so and, and, and when you say that what do you go through there kind of some of the basics of that yeah so we discuss um treatment options actually because we yeah. need to be more than just appliances and make yeah. sure our patients it's a legal the right and ethical thing. obligation yeah other options for patients how appliances work and how effective they are, just basic understanding of the studies to dis even discuss with physicians um, that they do work, how often, and then the different appliances. Yeah. Then taking a bite, and then if there's a side effect, and how to deliver. So yeah, there's a, there's okay. a lot, but we, um, I think, cover it pretty thoroughly and can get you started on yeah. your way to helping right. save lives. So 
how would you so so listen we may mention of it earlier anytime you choose a class it's all about who you connect with who you meet, reach with and sleep apnea quite frankly can be a very boring <laughs> subject okay so yeah. how would you describe your teaching style and what makes you unique so i'm well, asking you to sell yourself a uh, bit i'm gonna tell you what other people have told me um even my husband who's not a dentist he goes you're so funny. Why? How, I didn't know you were so funny. Why can't um, you be like that at all? Yeah, right? Um, I think what sets me apart is that I, I am a true nerd. And so I get to go learn all of that cerebral mm -hmm. study literature stuff and break it down to what it can mean for our patient. Okay, we have this information. Now how can we apply to the patient in a fun and practical way? Yeah. So when? you go take the one or two day course and you break it down into a 15, 20 minute. Here's what really matters. The cliff notes. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I throw in some jokes along the way, but I think being interactive, um, the energy, I just love the energy of these courses. I remember teaching the first course and I called my husband and I said, I'm home. I found a home mm -hmm. and it's the culture that you've created at 3d dentist. Um, coming to your home, interacting, like the, I have never been able to interact that up, up closely with other lecturers. Yeah, instructors, yeah. Yeah, to the point where I love when people reach out to me and ask questions. That means that they're engaged, that they're well, wanting to learn. I think and, that goes to a deeper thing there is, is what it really creates is a comfort level for people to ask us for help, mm -hmm. to tell us when they're struggling, and I think we go above and beyond, especially you, about being able to support them with, through private Facebook groups, through direct text messages, through DMs, through email, through phone calls, to access to our team members. I just want to see them succeed, not only for themselves, but for, for the patients, ultimately. And I, I know there's obstacles. I've yeah. been there. Like, that's the, it's like I've, I'm in the trenches with you guys. Like, I get it. And so I, th I feel like I can fast forward all of the years mm -hmm. of the things that I've tried that didn't work. And the sleep apnea world is ever changing. Yeah. And so- You're getting ready to have new rules and regulations? I know, and I feel like I can help bring that information yeah. to, the, to the group. And break and, it down. I think it's all yeah. about being practical. If somebody would ask me what makes our courses unique and different, I'd say, it's just listen, we're practical. We're everyday general dentists that work in our practices that deal with team members associates partners whatever it may be and all well, of those things have those struggles. challenges right yep. and 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 balance work life and home life and all these things and, and really show you a path you know to to get there to and truly it's about a path to get started and the path to take it to the next step and to the next step and however deep you want to go i know and i i think this needs to be said is just that you know, I, I've heard people say it is the only reason I bring it up is, well, I'm not Aaron Elliott. I can't do that. Yeah. I, I am a general dentist in a small town. Like I, I, anyone can do it if they find their start with their why and, and truly, you know, my first time, uh, my kids heard me speak. I mean, they happened to have heard me speak at Sierra World in Orlando when I talked in front of five, 6,000 people, whatever it was. And, and they said, you know, and people were coming up to us and say, you know, all those things. And, and my kids looked at me and like, like why, why do they like you? You're the guy that walks around in your boxes with your hand down your pants making funny why noises. Why do they want a picture of you? Yeah. I remember the first time they're like, I want a picture with you. I'm like, yeah. looking around. Yeah, no. So, no, it's, it's been it's humbling yeah it's just been amazing being able to be a part of 3d dennis and i'm excited um to continue to bring the knowledge and the energy but um help con continue to coach the people that have yeah. been there but i'm excited for you know i use the tagline we are family yeah you know and that depend. that's for us and yeah. also for the people that come through I, I i would i would say it's hard press for the vast majority of people that come through our programs to not us know their name, as long as, as, long as they're somewhat, you know, yeah. they don't seem like a hermit hanging out, yeah. right? Uh, we know their names, we know what's going on in their practice, we can, you know. Hey, you even said if they don't like the class, you'll give them your, yeah, their money back. I'll be happy to, I'll yeah. pay for your travel here, you yeah. know. I, I just want you to be happy. Yeah. So we've talked about a lot of things here. And if a dentist is, I know it's hard to believe, okay, but if a dentist is still on the fence about implementing sleep apnea in their practice, what would you say is the number one reason that they should look at sleep apnea? 
You know, when um, I gave my talk at Dense by Serona World, the, the first word out of my mouth was sexy. I figured that was an attention grabber. Um, but really what I was talking about is how all this technology, all these things that dentistry has to offer is amazing. It's sexy. Yeah. But ultimately, if we don't have a patient to take care of, it's all meaningless. And I think sleep apnea is something that we can bring to our patient that literally changes their lives, helps enrich their lives, their marriage. Their, uh, so I think as soon as you get your first success story, you'll see why yeah. I, I feel like it's this, I can spread the gospel and help that many more people. You know, what I've always said is sleep apnea is the one thing we can do in dentistry that can help save people's lives. Mm -hmm. You don't need teeth to live. You don't have to get rid of a cavity to live. But you got to breathe mm -hmm. to live, yep. you know, and and we can play such an important role. And at the end of the day, most of us went into dentistry to be a healthcare provider. Some of us Indians didn't get into medical school, so had to went to dental school. That, <laughs> that wasn't me, by the way. I've, been, I've wanted to be a dentist all my life. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, we get to help the patient. You know? mm -hmm. Aaron, it's unbelievably uh, easy to see how passionate you are about this, how successful you've been with this. Uh, with sleep apnea and how much you care about seeing other people succeed with sleep apnea. I want to thank you for being a part of 3D Dentist. I want to thank you for taking the time out today and thank you for all you do for our profession. Yep. Thank you.